Let's take a look at the nomenclature of alkyl halide. So if this is the alkyl halide, and I'm trying to assign an IUPAC name for it, you follow the same steps that we that we did in earlier videos, right? You find the, the longest uh, carbon chain involved. So let's see if we can find that. So how many carbons is the longest carbon chain? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So seven carbons, we called that heptane in our earlier video, so we'll go ahead and write heptane down here. So we have heptane like that. All right, now you find, now you figure out which way to number it. Do I number from the left side of the chain or do I number from the right side of the chain? Now, when you have an alkyl, uh, when you have a halogen in there and you have alkyl groups, you want a number to give the lowest number to either the alkyl group or to the halogen. So in this case, you could either start from the left or you could start from the right. If you start from the left, you'll give that alkyl group a number two. So if we start from the left here and I go one, and two like that, so there's another two for that alkyl group. If I start from the right, I would give the halogen a three. So it's the lowest number wins, so I'm gonna start from the left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, like that. All right, so let's go ahead and think about how we're going to name our alkyl group. So I have two methyl groups at two and four, so that's two, four dimethyl, so I can go ahead and put that in my name. So two, four, dimethyl heptane like that and now I can worry about my halogen which is which is at carbon number five so I have a uh, five bromo so when you have bromine in there you name it five bromo so five bromo two four dimethyl heptane is the correct IUPAC name for this and you have to worry about the alphabet rule right so the reason why I put the bromo before the methyls because B comes before M in the alphabet so that would be how to name this molecule let's look at another molecule let's uh, let's see let's go like this alright so let's go like that and let's put a chlorine here and let's put a bromine here all right, so same idea, right? Find your find your longest carbon chain. All right, so let's see if we can do that. Let's see what's the longest n number of carbons we have. I can have one, two, three, four, and five. So five carbons would be pentane. So I go ahead and write pentane here. And next, of course, I figure out which which side do I begin my numbering. Do I start from the left or do I start from the right? So if I start from the left, that would give this bromine a number one. If I start from the right, that would give this alkyl group a number two. So it makes sense to start from the, from the left here. So I get one, two, three, four, and five, like that. So now I have a methyl group at carbon four. So I can go ahead and write four methyl here. So four methyl pentane. And now I have to worry about my halogens, right? So I have a, um, a bromine at one and a, a chlorine at three. So just so I can space it a little bit better here, I know that the, the bromine's gonna come before the chlorine because of the alphabet rule. So I can go ahead and put the chlorine right here. So the chlorine's at three, so three chloro, like that. And then now I can go ahead and put my, my bromo in here at one. So one bromo, three chloro, four methyl pentane is the name for this molecule. All right, so let's do a few more. Let's look at Let's look at this one here. So let's see, like that and like that. All right, so for this one, um, once again, same steps, right? So I, I think to myself, all right, here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I have hexane. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down here. So I have hexane like that. Now, when I think about how to number this one, uh, it's a bit of a problem, right? Because if I number from the left, that would give the bromine a two. If I number from the right, that would give the methyl group a two. So I have a tie. So how do you how do you break that tie? Uh, it's based on the alphabet rule. So I have uh, my my substituents would be would be bromo versus methyl. So the B beats the M. So because the B beats the M alphabetically, that means I'm going to start from the left once again to give this a one, this a two, three four, five, and six. So think about the alphabet rule here. So now I have a methyl group at five, right? So this would be five methyl hexane. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in my bromine, right, at two, so it'd be two bromo. So my full IUPAC name, two bromo, five methyl hexane, like that. 
All right, what about stereochemistry? So what if stereochemistry is involved? What if you're giving something like this? All right, so a molecule that looks like that with a, uh, with a wedge there and an iodine atom there. So let's first name the molecule. Don't worry about stereochemistry. And, and then we'll go ahead and add stereochemistry in at the end. So once again, longest carbon chain. All right, so that would be one, two, three, four, five. Longest carbon chain in, um, with your halogen in there. So that would be five, so that would be pentane. All right, so go ahead and write pentane down here like that. Now, which side of the chain do I number from? Well, I want to get the lowest number possible. So this time I'm going to number from the right. One, two, three, four four, five, to give my substituents the lowest number possible. So I have a uh, methyl group and an iodo, right? So I comes before M, so I'm going to go ahead and put the methyl group at the end here. So I have a methyl group of three, so three methyl pentane, like that. All right, and now I have an iodo group at two, so two iodo, so I have two iodo, 3-methyl pentane, I have to specify which stereoisomer I have. So we're going to assign the, the R or the S system here. So once again, I think about um, increasing atomic number, right? The highest atomic number gets the highest priority. So iodine is going to have the highest atomic number. So this substituent is going to get a number one for priority, right? Remember, there's also a hydrogen attached to this carbon right here. So this is my chirality center right here. So the iodine gets a number one. The hydrogen, of course, gets number four, lowest priority. And now I have this, this alkyl group on the left and this methyl group on the right. I think we know the alkyl group on the left is going to get a second highest priority and the methyl group is going to get a third highest priority from an earlier video, right? So then we go, all right, we're going around this way, we're going around clockwise, and my hydrogen is going away from me. So going around clockwise is, of course, R. So this is going to be R. 2 iodo 3 methyl pentane like that. So all all of these uh, all of these have been the IUPAC system for uh, for naming alkyl halides. Sometimes you'll see the common names used. Okay? So what do I mean by common names? Sometimes sometimes you'll hear chemists just say like for this molecule right here, this is one that's used all the time. Right? You just say um, instead of instead of numbering the chain and talking about you know what's coming off of the carbons, you'll hear tert butyl chloride used most often as a name for this molecule. So tert butyl chloride, right? Because there's a tert butyl group. So that's a common name for it, and it's so common you'll you'll see it all the time instead of the IUPAC name. So that's the name that I will use most often too, and. Another molecule, so for small alkyl halides, the common nomenclature system is used, is used a lot. This would be ethyl bromide. Right? So you're, naming, you're essentially naming your alkyl group, right? and then worrying about your halogen. So for both of these, for common nomenclature, you think about the alkyl group and then the halogen that's attached to it. So ethyl bromide, you could call that bromoethane. Right? So ethyl bromide, would be, this would be the common name for it. If you wanted to use the IUPAC name, you could say it's bromo bromoethane, either one of those names is perfectly acceptable, all right, and, and, and you'll hear both. So the last thing that we need to do uh, for alkyl halides is talk about um, the classification, all right? So we've, we've talked about classifications before uh, in, in reference to things like alcohols, and uh, it's pretty much the same thing for alkyl halides. So if I have a situation like this with a halogen, uh, attached to this carbon right here, and I want to classify this alkyl halide. Once again, you just look and see how many carbons that carbon is attached to. So the carbon attached to my halogen is attached to one other carbon, and that makes this a primary alkyl halide. All right, so that's a primary alkyl halide, and you know, same same concept. If we uh, if we had this situation. Right, and I want to classify this alkyl halide. This is my carbon that's attached to my halogen. So I think to myself, how many carbons are attached to that? Right, there are two of them, right, which makes this a secondary alkyl halide. And then, of course, if we had a situation like this, right, and I want to classify this alkyl halide, once again, I just look at the carbons attached. So, of course, one two, and three, so this is a tertiary alkyl halide. So if you look at these two examples we just did for our common nomenclature, tert butyl chloride, right? So same idea, this is our alkyl halide, uh, and I see one, two, three, right? So this would be a tertiary alkyl halide. And 
for ethyl bromides, right, this carbon right here is attached to one other carbon. So this would be an example of a primary alkyl halide. So this, this will be your first step when you're doing some reactions of alkyl halides to recognize uh, how it is classified.